We uh, start with the opening remarks, and I would like to give the floor to uh, Beth Crawford. She is the director of the Office of Strategy, Program and Budget, and also officer in charge of the Office of Innovation in FAO. Please, Beth, the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much, uh, Cristiano. It's really a pleasure to be here today. So, dear participants and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues from across the world, welcome to today's side event on Tapipedia, fostering knowledge sharing in support of agricultural innovation, which is organized by the FAO Office of Innovation that also hosts the Secretariat of the Tropical Agricultural Platform. So as many of you are aware, the Tropical Ag Agriculture Platform or TAP is a G20 initiative aimed at making capacity development and knowledge sharing mechanisms for the tropics and subtropics more efficient and effective. <clears throat> Since its official launch at the G20 meeting in Mexico in 2012, FAO or the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations was requested to lead its development. We are very grateful to our long-term resource partner, the European Commission, for their generous support and their joint efforts, as a result of which TAP now comprises 52 global, regional, and national partners representing agricultural research, education and extension, international development, and funding agencies. Now, in 2016, the TAP Secretariat launched TAPipedia, an information sharing system that is positioning itself as the reference gateway for innovation related practices, stories, and case studies. Tapipedia mainly targets researchers and practitioners in the field of development and cooperation and aims to be a global information system for capacity development practices, innovation systems analysis, success stories, participatory and multi stakeholder approaches policy analysis, and lessons learned in the context of agricultural innovation. Tapipedia aims to reach a broader audience and enrich its repository. This side event is part of FAO's Science and Innovation Forum 2022, which is highlighting the centrality of science, technology, and innovation for agri-food systems transformation. As putting knowledge into reach is essential for innovation, in this side event, we would like to showcase the knowledge sharing aspects of Tapipedia and open a broader discussion to strategize on the use of online platforms in knowledge sharing for agricultural innovation. We hope to identify future trends, explore synergies, and envisage together possible future developments. For this event, we've assembled a fantastic panel of experts with rich experiences in policy processes for agricultural innovation from diverse contexts across the globe. I would like to welcome and thank the esteemed speakers and panelists for joining us today. We will hear from Nevena Alexandrova, Giulia Palestini, and Cristiano Consolini in the first part of the event, and have the pleasure to have Andre Laperriere Peter Spanoge, Viviana Palmerieri, and Valeria Pesce as our panelists in the panel discussion. I would also like to thank the organizers of this event from the Office of Innovation, Giulia Palestini, Cristiano Consolini, Nevena Alexandrova, and Salvaraju Ramasami as TAP secretary. In addition to our wonderful panelists and presenters here in this webinar, this event is also about sharing, discussion, and learning together with you all, the participants. Thus, I would like to encourage you all to participate actively in today's event by engaging in discussions and asking questions throughout the webinar. I wish you all fruitful discussions and let's innovate together to put knowledge more effectively and efficiently into reach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beth. I would like now to invite uh, Daryl Sexton to speak. Daryl is joining us from the European Commission Directorate General for International Partnership. Please, Daryl, the floor is yours. Christiana, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thanks, right, that's good. So yes, thank you for um, asking the European Commission as a donor and partner 
to say a few words at the opening of this side event, looking at Tapopedia. The European Commission has funded the work of the Tropical Agricultural Platform, firstly through the Capacity Development for Agricultural Innovation Systems project that ran from 2015 to 2019 and was implemented by FAO and AgriNatura. And now this work's being continued through the EU funded developing capacities in agricultural innovation systems, scaling up the tropical agriculture platform TAP framework. The project's of five years duration and the EU has provided 5 million euros of grant funding. It started in June 2019 and will end in July 2024. The project is being implemented in nine countries, Rwanda, Burkina Faso, Eritrea, Malawi, Senegal, Cambodia, Lao PDR, Colombia and Pakistan, and works closely with regional and sub-regional organizations in Africa, Asia Pacific and Latin America and the Caribbean. TAPACE is part of the development of smart innovation through research in agriculture, DAZIRA initiative. The DAZIRA initiative is a multi-annual program of interventions funded by the European Union. DAZIRA effectively aims to put more science into development. It's doing this by contributing to the climate relevant, productive and sustainable transformation of agriculture and food systems in low and middle income countries. At present, there are up to 300 million euros of projects being funded under DAZIRA. The funding comes from the European Union's Global Public Goods and Challenges thematic programme budget line and is managed by the European Commission. The projects are running in parallel and are mostly planned to finish in 2024. DAZIRA has three pillars of intervention. The first pillar is basically funding action projects in the field. The projects work on the whole in research and innovation in agriculture and food systems. These are mainly managed by EU delegations or directly by European member states. The second pillar focuses on governance, mainly providing direct grant funding to institutions and networks involved in capacity building of government, government aspects of research and innovation. This is where we find the TAPACE project. In particular, DAZIRA is supporting organizations in change of the governance of research at regional, continental and global level. The third pillar provides support to EU scientific knowledge and evidence to inform policy design. Development of the Tapopedia tool that we are here to look at today is an integral part of the EC funded TAPACE project. It's an information sharing system designed to enhance knowledge exchange, which aims to be a global information system for good capacity development practices, innovation outputs, success stories and lessons learned. Tapopedia is managed by the TAP Secretariat, hosted by the Office of Innovation of the FAO of the United Nations. It's already large and has over 4,000 resources with 54 reference terms also referred to as topics and tags. Ladies and gentlemen, the European Commission Directorate of International Partnerships, where I work, is engaged in promoting the development of sustainable agri-food systems, which are able to respond the food demand whilst at the same time combating climate change and protect, protecting biodiversity as outlined in the EU Green Deal and Farm to Fork strategy. We see the TAP Secretariat and the Office of Innovation at FAO's work as an important element of our approach of building capacity and scientific knowledge and we are keen to see TAPopedia become widely used and a reference success. We therefore look forward to the panel discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daryl. Now, participants, you have heard about TAP and the Tropical Agricultural Platform, so you may wonder more about it. So before we start with the session, we want to share with you a very short video to introduce you to TAP. Please, Julia.
Thank you very much, Julia. Now I would like to start uh, the uh, session on Tapipedia Knowledge Sharing Portal. And I would like to invite Nevena Alexandrova Stefanova. Nevena is an Agricultural Extension Officer in the Office of Innovation at FAO. Nevena, please. Hello, I, uh, while I will try to share the, my screen, I would like to uh, say hello to everybody. Um, good uh, morning in the Americas, good afternoon in uh, Europe and Africa, and uh, good evening in Asia. I, we understood that we have participants from all these uh, countries. So in this first session, uh, we, going to focus on our experiences with Wikipedia. However, uh, I am not going to talk about it here. My role here will be to discuss together with you what is the linkage between knowledge, knowledge sharing and innovations and how they uh, can support uh, the innovation processes uh, in the whole world, but particularly in the top uh, the tropical agriculture um, countries. So why we should share knowledge and reach out in uh, agriculture innovation? In FAO, we believe that um, uh, innovation is a central driving force for achieving a world free from hunger and malnutrition. Agriculture innovation can be catalyzed through strengthening full functional capacities, that are also called uh, soft skills. And here you can see on the left side, um, the essence of the top uh, common uh, capacity development framework for agriculture innovation systems, where knowledge capacity is a particular functional capacity that needs to be strengthened together with technical capacities across uh, individuals, organizations, and enabling environments. Um, also, um, in FAO, we um, understood that um, local innovations are key for achieving an impact. Many existing practices uh, which led to innovation can be easily adapted at the local context. At the same time, it is, um, we noted that the agriculture innovations respond better to local changes, uh, challenges when there is a co-creation of knowledge through participatory processes. This is usually happening at the system level, at agriculture innovation system level. And both organizations and institutions are involved and work in synergies. In order that innovations are supported and enabled, we need to have policies and investments that are conducive to uh, innovations. And we all need to work in partnerships, and such a partnership is actually uh, as well. How to enhance the impact of the knowledge on innovation? The knowledge we experienced has to be um, pro uh, packaged in, in different ways in order that this knowledge could be actionable because um, it is a um, very nice um, um, definition of the TAP capacity development framework that says innovation is the knowledge that is put in practice and how we should put this knowledge into practice into an actionable format. First of all, the knowledge has to be available. Nowadays, however, we are witnessing um, a boom of data, big data, uh, open data, um, and um, in, the knowledge is everywhere around us however, not always available to the most vulnerable, the smallholders, uh, men, women, youth, and elderly. It has to be accessible. It has to be actionable. It has to, to be solution and audience-oriented. 
uh, we discussed already, it has to be also local in order to make a, a, a bigger impact, especially at the critical uh, juncture of the development of agri-food agri systems. This is the smallholders, the most vulnerable. And it has to be co-created, shared at local, country, regional, and global levels. I would like now to explore a few of the strategies for knowledge sharing platforms for innovation that we have uh, come across. One of them is a clearinghouse type of strategy. Um, the clearinghouse is a term from the financial world that means that your uh, money will be safe during transactions and will not be influenced by by the market in a very particular moment when those uh, uh, transactions are in the clearinghouse. In the knowledge management, clearinghouse is used as a safe and reliable knowledge space where the information will not change and it will be a reliable type of information, uh, mainly from official sources. This clearinghouse is used um, in, um, for instance, in um, conventions like um, uh, Convention of Biological Diversity and their protocols. And it is also used as an official reporting mechanism uh, in which countries are sending their reports or data on biological diversity or release of genetically modified organisms, for instance. And uh, it is also a, it's a place where um, countries that are the parties of these conventions collaborate, interact, uh, and also provides visibility to uh, the actions those uh, parties or countries are taking in order to increase biodiversity and conserve, preserve um, um, biological diversity. So this is one example. Another example is the one-stop shop that becomes very popular nowadays. That is an ambitious task in which uh, the information provider is targeting usually a particular audience um, and would like to provide all the information that is needed to this uh, particular target audience, usually for a particular purpose, usually for uh, policy, uh, policy incentives are re uh, related. For instance, farmers um, have to apply for subsidies and they have to provide a lot of information and use a lot of information at the same time. So this type of um, uh, one-stop shops are usually used by e-governments. Very popular is the uh, e-government Estonia which is uh, very comprehensive and uh, has uh, 80, um, sorry, 98% of usage. And there are niche platforms that have very specific objectives, specific niche um, in uh, terms of topics and audience and very um, targeted um, scope and audience. For instance, um, the TECA is a FAO corporate platform for technologies, uh, innovations, and practices for smallholder farmers. And you can also um, check the smallholder innovation platform uh, for Europe and Central Asia that is uh, also supported by FAO and uh, is exploring very um, specific mechanisms to target only smallholders. The, the, this is it is called SHIP, Smallholder Innovation Platform, and uh, starts, it's very much solution oriented. Uh, it is um, using um, solutions to farmer uh, problems in order to cluster and classify the information. So in relation to our work uh, in the top uh, AIS project, and I thank very much uh, Daryl for introducing the project and the efforts of the uh, 
uh, European Commission uh, in, in related to the overall Desira framework. Uh, what we do, we, we have four uh, big outputs. One is the support to tap governance. Uh, then uh, the second output is about assisting countries to strengthen their capacities for agriculture innovation systems. And we work here in nine countries with very interesting results. Then we also promote the use uh, of TAP tools, which Tropical Agriculture Platform partners have generated uh, for capacity development at regional level. We work with regional organizations here on research and extension, for instance. And we have the uh, four output that I would like to center your attention on, the global knowledge and communication products. In this global knowledge products, we collect good practices, lessons learned, case studies, uh, and innovation processes from our uh, project countries, but much beyond. And we document um, and scale up these uh, practices as well as we explore new tap tools, uh, such as um, uh, diagnosis of agriculture innovation systems, policies and investments. We work with e-learning modules, but we also work with Tapipedia and Teka. So before I pass uh, the floor to much more uh, interesting aspects of Tapipedia to my colleagues, I would like to, um, um, I challenge you to think about how we should put knowledge into practice in a platform. And all of you uh, are aware of the uh, knowledge pyramid that starts with uh, data as raw elements uh, going uh, further to information where elements are linked, linked and contextualized then knowledge, which is an organized information, you, you give a meaning uh, to, to the information. And, uh, and then the applied knowledge that leads to innovation. Mm. So in this case, we, we have an increased complexity. However, we decrease uh, the processing, uh, the processed information. So what is the value um, of um, providing uh, packaged information. It somehow uh, brings it as, um, faster to the innovation process. However, uh, one may argue that um, um, information that is not um, well interpreted, um, it's not uh, a real knowledge, although packed as knowledge could be misleading and may not lead to innovation. This is why um, we in uh, Tepipedia, we use this approach. We work, uh, operate here in the uh, applied knowledge part that leads to innovation, but at the same time, uh, use the element of the um, clearinghouse mechanisms that provide safe place, validated information and knowledge to our uh, partners. So, Pipedia is about partnering with um, uh, different stakeholders to share their resources and initiative on capacity development for agriculture innovation systems. And uh, in addition to this large knowledge resource sharing component, um, there is a, a specific focus that TAP capacity development framework is very much promoted through Tepipedia and um, um, different resources, uh, learning modules and in an interactive format are presented. So um, our ambition is, um, when we type in Google uh, knowledge and uh, innovation, we should see this picture where uh, most of the people will uh, look at the top. Thank you very much. And I pass the floor now to my colleagues. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Nevena, to you and to Beth and Darrell for the um, important, excellent background and uh, inspiring words. Um, hello, everybody. Um, yes, I will take you on a quick tour of Tapipedia uh, together with my colleague, Cristiano. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so this is the Tapipedia homepage. Uh, you can clearly see that the focus is to exchange knowledge and support capacity development for agricultural innovation systems. Uh, Tapipedia website is in English, French, and Spanish, and uh, the repository includes resources in these languages. Uh, by clicking on the flags, you can um, switch to the other languages. Um, so you can see here on the left side that we have a bar with key metrics. Uh, we'll go back to that in a minute before I would like to show you the page in its entirety. Uh, so you see right below the photo slider, um, uh, a scrolling text. Uh, for instance, you can read here, FAO Science and Innovation Strategy. Uh, so um, this is a document released a few days ago, very important and um, interesting read. Uh, so here we have the latest additions to, to TAP, and if you click, you can uh, access them. Um, so this is a short introduction to Tapipedia, and then we encounter the search bar uh, in this um, prominent position. Um, so before we test it, let's uh, see the remaining components of the homepage. Um, so this box uh, on the right side is a Twitter feed, uh, basically um, a window uh, where our users can read real time uh, the latest tweets of the Tropical Agriculture Platform of TAP. Uh, so you see that by scrolling down, you see more tweets and retweets. And um, of course, if you click, um, uh, you can land in the Twitter pages. Um, and then finally, here we see four elements. Um, so um, these three squares are quick entry points to key um, actions. Uh, so to discover the resources, to register to the network, and to upload the um, your resources. Uh, and then this last element, uh, the spiral, is a shortcut uh, to resources related to, to TAP. So now let's move back to the metrics. Here uh, we can read 4,200 resources, uh, more than 4,200 resources. Examples are um, good practices, innovation outputs, um, success stories, lessons learned, and um, actually, uh, we pay particular attention to scientific publications, but we also collect and welcome more informal types of documents uh, like uh, pro project reports, manuals, tools, uh, presentations, and many, many others. Um, I would like to stress that all um, users can access these resources without any registration. But then if you want to share your own resources, you have to register. So you click here and uh, you can do it as an individual or as a member of an organization and it takes only a few, few seconds. Um, so for you to understand, um, when a resource is shared with us, there is a team doing a quality and relevance check before the publication of the resource. And of course, we receive resources, uh, but we also collect resources from um, recognized sources, uh, including uh, uh, international organizations, uh, research institutes, uh, and uh, peer-reviewed journals, for instance. So we are really committed to um, offer a constantly updated and verified repository. So let's move ahead. Here we see 54 topics. Um, so we have developed in, uh, in a participatory process with experts, a taxonomy of 54 terms. Uh, they represent um, relevant aspects and dimensions of capacity development for agricultural innovation systems. So you see here the topics in a graph and also in a column here. So you can browse the resources by uh, each uh, topic. Um, so what I would like to highlight is that these topics are used as tags uh, in all the Tapipedia resources. Um, so um, this allow to um, uh, an, an efficient filtering when searching for the resources. So I really invite you to explore this taxonomy. And uh, actually we uh, consider to update it in the near future. 
uh, including for a better alignment um, with the agrovoc vocabulary, for example. So we will collect um, feedback uh, in this regard. So then let's continue with, um, uh, we have more data here. Uh, we can read uh, 974 publishers, 188 um, countries, uh, meaning those covered by the resources and 81 organizations which are in our network. So we will tell you more about the network later. So all these metrics are uh, clickable. Uh, so now um, it is worth to, to test the, the search uh, functionality. Uh, so as you can see here, I can um, uh, type and search, but I can also opt for the advanced search uh, where you have various uh, um, fields like uh, language, year, topic, uh, type of resources. And um, again, these topics are the ones of the taxonomy. Uh, so this is um, a system in line with those um, used by the most uh, uh, important repositories. Um, so now we'll use the simple search. For example, we search for the term extension, uh, which uh, is, um, is a key topic for us. And uh, as you see, we have um, uh, over uh, 870 results uh, coming from different sources. Um, so you can see that for each result, uh, you have the title and key information. Um, I would like to highlight that uh, on the right side here, you can um, uh, see that there are various uh, filters which give you the possibility to further uh, refine your search. So actually here we see the, the most uh, relevant uh, um, uh, results. Um, for the topic extension. So the resources are automatically sorted by relevance. But you can also sort uh, by title, for instance, meaning uh, alphabetically or by publication year. Uh, so here now we see the um, uh, first, the latest results. So uh, those from 2022. So you can see that um, uh, you can, for each resource, uh, uh, click on view resource. Uh, and this is to download the resource immediately. Or you can click on more info uh, and you will get to this page. For example, for this resource um, with more, uh, more information. And uh, what I would like to highlight here uh, is the part about the topics. So um, each resource of our repository has some key tags and they are taken from the taxonomy I, I, uh, I showed you earlier. So this really um, helps the user to understand what the resource is about. Um, so below you see we have also related resources. And of course, uh, if you click here, you can uh, uh, view the, the resource. So here we get the PDF in this case. So I think now we can uh, move back to the home page. And um, uh, so in particular, I want to show you that by clicking on the spiral here, um, we can see at once the resources by tap. So first of all, we see the three common framework volumes, uh, which are mentioned by my colleague Nevena. Uh, then we have manuals, all these are clickable, uh, tools and, and several other publications. So. Uh, you'll see that the list is very, very long. You can uh, scroll down and then load more. Um, well, as you see here at the top of the page, uh, we have a sort of GIF. Um, uh, and you can read this is an interactive version of the common framework. Um, so very quickly, I would um, like to show you that uh, here you find several interactive graphs and um, these are about key concepts uh, of the common framework and also about its application. Uh, so for instance, this graph um, is uh, about the cycle of five stages for capacity development interventions in support of uh, um, agricultural innovation. Um, so you can click on each stage and have a, um, a, a description uh, and also access uh, fact sheets and tools um, and um, also we have, for instance, a glossary here uh, with definitions to better understand the main concepts. 
So this is a very rich section, this one uh, on the common framework, and I, I hope you will, uh, you will enjoy it. So now from the orange tab, we were here in Discover tab resources, we can move to the, uh, to the purple tab. Um, here we have all the resources, not only the, the top ones. And uh, you can see that we, we call it discovery space because actually you can um, browse the resource. Uh, we see by language, by theme, by region, resource type, and publisher. And here again, we have a very long list in alphabetical uh, order. Uh, for instance, the themes. Uh, here we have um, these blue icons uh, represent 10 macro categories under which the resources of Wikipedia are grouped. So you can, um, uh, you can uh, search the resources through this, uh, this, um, these filters. And um, well, please note that uh, from any page in the website, you can always click on this magnifying um, glass at the top right. Uh, and search for, for resources. Um, well, um, so the last important space that we would like to highlight is the Tapipedia network. Um, I will leave it to my um, colleague Cristiano to tell you about that and also to respond to, to the question that you are maybe asking yourself. So why should I join Tapipedia? So over to you, Cristiano. Thank you, Julia, and hello again to everyone. As Julia was saying, I'm going to briefly introduce you to the Tapipedia network. So you can access the Tapipedia network from the homepage by clicking up here, and you will reach this page, the Tapipedia network uh, page. Now, as Julia mentioned before, I would like to stress that uh, to um, enjoy the <laughs> materials that we have on Tapipedia, you don't need to register. To contribute to it, you can register either as a user individual or as an organization. Um, with certain organization that wants to join the Tapipedia network, we um, we go a little bit further beyond. So we organize events and webinars together, and we work, of course, to promoting uh, agricultural innovation systems. And um, this participation is, of course, free and open to every interested parties. The organization uh, that we usually welcome are agricultural research, education and extension institutions, the private sector, civil society, obviously farmers organizations, agencies and fora working at international, regional and local level, and uh, banks and donors. In these page, you can see also an interactive map uh, in which you can find where our you know, uh, network is located. And at the bottom of the page, you will see the uh, show room of all the, <laughs> of all our members organization um, that have created a profile. So if we access one of it, uh, we will of course find out more about them. So, for instance, for APARI, uh, this is the acronym. You can find here the short description, the logo, the, their website, and where they are located. You can also see here another map to geolocate them properly. And at the bottom of this page, the organizational page, you can see uh, some of the resources that they have uploaded so far, uh, which I believe it's a true... Uh, an interesting um, showcase of all that APARI is doing for uh, capacity development in uh, AIS. And um, another point that I would like to stress, for instance, of course, APARI, they have their own website, but in case your organization does not have one, you can, of course, uh, upload the resources anyway. So you can uh, give us a link to access uh, the resources or you can upload them directly. So we will keep the, the file uh, in store for you. And uh, what else can I say but to please, you know, uh, uh, check our website and join our uh, network. We are now more than 80 uh, organizations. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Cristiano and Julia. Um, before we are going to the discussion, I just uh, would like to tell you there are very interesting questions today uh, in the question and answer uh, box and also in the chat. You may decide to, to respond to them and um, we may leave one or two questions in the question and answer box for uh, at the end of our discussion before the closing remarks. Thank you again for presenting the Pipedia. And um, now uh, we are um, back to our second part of the technical uh, program. And that's the panel discussion on the knowledge sharing platforms as a powerful tool for the achievement of the sustainable development goals. And I have uh, Excellent panelists with me, Viviana Palmieri, uh, Andre Laperriere, uh, Valeria Pesce, and Peter Span uh, Spanok. And um, um, we have three questions for this um, session. And the first question is, uh, what is your experience with knowledge sharing platforms which are conducive to innovation? What have been the success factors and the challenges you faced? And who were the end users of the knowledge you shared? Um, with that, I would like to give the floor to Peter first to answer this first question. Thank you. You are muted. Good morning, now it works. Huh? Good morning to everyone worldwide. Um, here in Belgium, it's already late in the evening. So, but anyway, I see still a blue sky outside. So, um, welcome to this uh, debate. And um, the question is, okay, what is my experience? I speak from what we are developing. It's EU Farm Book. EU Farm Book is, uh, in fact, a digital platform that is designed in the first place to host information from European agricultural projects, what that we call multi-actor projects. But now in the coming years, we look more in detail to what is all done in research uh, on a regional and on national level. So that is what we want and what we are looking for. I believe the success of our platform is that we said, okay, you have scientific papers, you have journals and so on. All this information is present in other channels. And in fact, we are looking to that information that is how to do it yourself. It is YouTube, education, movies. It is uh, information that is, yes, really on the level of the practitioner and the practitioner in our case is the farmer and it is also the forester, but it's also the advisor. That's a person that is coming and is talking to that, uh, that people. Um, our platform and our idea is that um, it should, yeah, it's very similar to, to Tapipedia, I must say. So it means that what you just have seen, it's exactly more or less the same as what we developed. Of course, that's, that's, that's normal. I think if, if what was not the case, then we had a problem. But the addition to that is that we are fully aiming for the full translation. So it means that in Europe, uh, we are looking for to all the national languages. So in the first case, we will have automatic translation tools that is added in the system so that people, if they open that information, that knowledge object, that they can start reading it in their own language and that they can start at least understand the major rules. And additional to the platform of Tapipedia, we also have that interactive platform added to that. I always call uh, EU Farmbook the wedding between uh, Farmbook, uh, between Facebook and between uh, Wikipedia. So the trustful information comes from um, from the uh, yeah fr from the projects eh, from the national funded project or the European funded project they should supply us with the right information that we store in the system but next to that we also invite people to start up a discussion about it so they can give feedback and maybe they are looking to the person who created 
that object and in that way uh, we believe that we can have just like you have in multimedia nowadays we can form up a community around the farm book so that people start and come into contact with each other and it's also seen that uh, they can start talking in their own language and that language will be automatically translated in the language of someone else so it means that the farmer in the netherlands can talk to a farmer in uh, they yeah, are Spain and so on. So maybe this is maybe in short, I, I believe that is something that uh, we believe that will be added to what is now presented to Tapipedia from our side. And that's Farmbook. Of course, Farmbook is Europe, Europe oriented and uh, Tapipedia is uh, more to the south, eh, if I'm well. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for this very interesting experience. And indeed, um, a lot of strategies are quite similar for the Wikipedia. Um, also, the niche orientation, the validation process, uh, and everything. And uh, I uh, like very much this interactive moment that you are creating, uh, allowing farmers and practitioners from different countries to find a common ground and language to interact between, uh, between them. Why? Because knowledge is not everything. In order to put the knowledge in practice, you need the human element, uh, not only the, the platform, the electronic uh, element, uh, the interaction and in the collaborative effort, the innovation uh, is born faster and has a bigger impact. Then uh, may I go further uh, to Andre, please, to respond to this first question on Thank your you experiences. Very yes. Thank you very much, Nevena. Um, yeah, the, the, these are very important topics and uh, I'm, I'm very glad that they're part of today's discussion. Uh, I would just like to say two things uh, in, in trying to answer the question. First, um, I like very much the uh, the classification that I think Nevena you had in your presentation earlier, where you sort of uh, uh, depicted uh, repositories as being from three different types: one being a clearinghouse type, the other one being a niche type, the other one being a one-shop stop type. So I'll just start with a quick word on on these three categories, which I think are are very nicely defined and and they encompass pretty well what's out there. Um, each of these three categories, though, have advantages or difficulties inherent to them. So I'll come back to the solutions to them, but just to say that um, the one that we see that might have maybe the most impact in the field because it's the closest to the end user is the, is was defined as the niche uh, platform, something that is very well defined around the problem or a specific issue or a group group of people that have uh, something in common, a common project to under, to undertake. So that's the the one. Uh, oftentimes, though, when when an organization develops a niche, a nice niche platform, especially if it's very much used, then excitement kicks in because then you start to get more data that may not be 100% in line with what you were, but it's interesting too. So might as well throw it in too, which is often the trap that, that happens. So if you fall too quickly into that, then what you used to, to have as a focus uh, repository is going to become sort of a mishmash soup of everything, which makes it much more difficult for the end user to navigate and, and use. And, and the third, but in sequence normally is the first, is the clearinghouse, which we see most often used by uh, governments. Um, there, the, nobody really wants to pay for this uh, because it, the, the benefit that you get out of, uh, of, of doing this, curating your data and clearing it, is not immediate. And oftentimes it goes through someone else to keep the government example government would like its own data to be to be valid of course so that it can use it properly but eventually maybe all the data that is relevant to its activities to be cleared as well but um, the more you do that then the more the costs go up the the bureaucracy goes up also so you have to find a balance at some point because you don't want to hinder the generation of data but you want to make sure that it has a, a reasonable level of quality but also 
and I'll come down back to that in a way that is sustainable. So these are the three categories, the way I see them. Now, the three, from our experience, we're in 127 countries, so we've seen a, a lot of many different types of platforms, but the three small pieces of advice I could give is, the first one is in a way related or a link to this comment I had on the niche platforms. Whatever you do, you have to be focused. And, and that doesn't mean that you have the only to have one goal in your repository, but for each goal that you have, there must be a plan, there must be uh, a, a clear setup and, and clear tools to use these different components, if you will. So that's the first one. The second one, they're not in order of priorities. They're all three are important, I think. The second one is uh, user buy-in. If you want your your platform to be used and, and to stimulate innovation, to make people want more of it and go to it and find new ways to combine the data that's in it, it has to be exciting and it has to answer some kind of a, a need that has been felt or expressed uh, by, by the end users. So the buy-in is the key. Just coming with a brilliant idea is not good enough. It has to, to come as much as possible from the base. And the last but not least is the business plan. I referred to it when I mentioned, when I had a word about the clearinghouse uh, part of the, the data management. Sustainability is oftentimes uh, something that is forgotten. Oh yeah, we have uh, funding for the next three years, so we're fine, we'll think about it later. But we've seen too many of these nice projects, including some efforts to disseminate knowledge through data that have eventually failed because the funding ran out and there was no plan B. That's why we like, and we've seen hundreds of these models in within our network in, in Godan, models that have a, a built-in return on the investment, direct or indirect, but it, it has been thought of and is usually implemented in a, in a growing manner. So you start small and then eventually the project should fly on its own. So, so, so it goes for the repository managements. So that's my initial two cents from Godan. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andre, for the vast experience and uh, um, well, clearly formulated tips, and also for bringing up the issue about sustainability of the platforms. And uh, also in my experience, this is one of uh, the main bottlenecks of the many platforms that have been developed and uh, have been phased out when the funding uh, was not um, available. Um, so we will uh, take due note about it. And I would like to give the floor to Viviana uh, for her um, impressions and experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Nevena. Uh, well, my experience in knowledge management for innovation and trying to make sense of all this uh, is over 20 years. Uh, but I wanted to share the, the experience of one information sharing system that we had, or knowledge sharing system, as we called it, that it was fostered by Foragro and Dica. It lasted for over 20 years, so we know the whole life cycle, and I thought it would be a little interesting to share here. Um, at one point, it was quite successful. Uh, it We began allowing people to share their own resources online in a time where everybody had a webmaster who had to uh, put things on internet. The, uh, even social media wasn't that active. So it was, uh, it started uh, giving this opportunity to people who probably didn't ha even have a web page or didn't have access to upload their contents anywhere else. Uh, so it grew very fast at the beginning. The need was important, but I don't know. I uh, Maybe the, the success factor was at that time that, and then it just went on growing. Um, we had even 20,000 individuals, not organizations, <laughs> um, registered and subscribing to the, uh, the, the bulletins we sent out periodically. And, but I wanted to focus more, I mean, it was quite successful. It ended just because of an uh, administration decision. Uh, 
But I wanted to, to highlight the challenges. I think um, sustainability, as Andre said, is a key issue. But it's a key issue, not just uh, trying to get funding forever, but it's uh, you need a lot of commitment by the people who are uh, managing the systems, whatever platform it is. Uh, and you need a lot of uh, commitment and the will to invest in knowledge management from the institutions that host the, the, the systems. Uh, I think that is one of the challenges. Uh, our users included from researchers down to farmer organizations uh, and, and farmers, um, students, uh, research in, in extensionists. We had a whole bunch of extensionists. And people found it a useful resource to find out a little bit about the general uh, novelties in the agriculture research for development field. Uh, and, and I guess that, that, that was one of the, the success factors. The challenge with this is that many of these people uh, were very happy using it as a resource, but not many people are willing to collaborate. When they have a need and they can't share anywhere else, okay, they'll use it. But the most common way of people uh, participating is sending an email with whatever they want to share somebody else can put it up in the platform for them. And that, it, I mean, it's it's just, uh, the, I don't know, maybe all humans are a little lazy. If somebody else will do it, we won't do it. Uh, but I think uh, it, it shows a little bit more about the, the strength of the commitment of what we call partners or subscriber or participants or stakeholders. Uh, the fact that they, they, they're they willing to use whatever is sent, but they're not really willing to put a lot on their part. And then a, a challenge that I find for all these, uh, more and more, you find alternative platforms where maybe a Google search could be just as good to find the, the new things, the novelties, the events, the new documents, the new research, the new options for innovation um, than any of our systems. And I think that's where the, the added value of this type of online platforms for information or knowledge sharing um, it has to be really taken care of. Uh, you can't just suppose that everybody will want it because we have it there and very well organized. Uh, it's, uh, it's a more profound analysis of exactly what is the value you are adding. And some of the things like clearing houses that Nevena answers, I mean, it's it's obvious. You have to have all that information together because it, it serves a policy or a, some kind of purpose that or governance purpose. So you have to have everything together. You can't just rely on doing a Google search and they'll all come up. But when we're talking about innovation in agricultural production and globally or regionally, our focus was regional for Latin America and the Caribbean or the Americas in general, but uh, and there's not really a lot of value that you can add just by uh, making the searches uh, very, I don't know, user-friendly. The, the added value has to come from somewhere else, from uh, the possibility of working together, of co-designing solutions with all these uh, possibilities for or options for innovation that come out of what everybody does everywhere. Uh, then you can come up with solution, but you have to be able to co-design, to, to work together, not just uh, chat with someone, but really uh, uh, bring the possibility of partnerships being built on the, the platforms. I'll leave it here so uh, we can move forward with the next questions. Thank you, Viviana. Uh, I'll take your last words. Um, 
that uh, we have to, um, in order to build value, including um, uh, uh, bringing uh, partners working together um, in order to um, create uh, incentives for sustainability of the platforms. Valeria, may I ask you about your experience in GFAR? Thank you, Valeria. Now I'm the last one. So I heard a lot of interesting points from the other speakers and several aspects, of course, are important also for the experiences that I wanted to, to relate. I'm, I'm going to focus on one aspect. I, I agree with all the things that have been said and I've had similar experiences with similar challenges. I'm going to focus on one aspect because of the nature of the place where I work, I work for GFAR, and GFAR uh, is a forum on, uh, on research and innovation, and the focus is on building partnerships, on facilitating partnerships among members, and works in partnerships, and also works on partnership principles on how to work together. So the aspect that I'm going to look into is uh, the, the challenges and success factors of when you co-manage a platform in a partnership, which has happened to us a lot in the past. So we've been members of partnerships. Uh, we, we, there was CIR a long time ago, the coherence, the information for agricultural research and development. Then there was Godan, and we collaborated a lot with Andre. We were part of the, of the network. We were members, and so we were in the partnership. What happened is in both experiences, we, of course, it, there were those were partnerships about data sharing and open data. So the first instinct was we had to build some knowledge and information sharing platform with all the data that our partners have. And we felt also that we had sort of a mandate. I mean, you are a big partnerships. All the big actors are there. FAO World was there, CJR was there, GFAR, global, but also regional, core, etc. So if you felt that you had a mandate to build a big knowledge and information sharing platform, and that happened in Athens, Seattle, and not exactly in Godan, but in the Godan Action Project, where we built also a platform for knowledge sharing. Again, the, the challenges, I mean, the experiences were good in terms of partnerships. The challenges, and I'm linking here to what has been said already, the first one was already discontinuing of funding. What happens? All these platforms were created when there was some funding available, some project. Then the funding, of course, was exhausted. And then luckily, I mean, since we were working in partnerships, nothing stopped immediately. But you know what happens over time, the, the commitments of partners uh, decreases, etc. So we found that the main challenges were the, 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 the partners decreasing interest because of mainly three reasons. Sometimes because they were going to build their own platforms. They preferred to concentrate, of course, the funding, the, the resources, the, the efforts on their own platforms. Uh, and uh, apart the value of working together and sharing the, the information was still less than the value of having their own platform. But also in some cases, changes of priority. It happens that for an institution, knowledge sharing becomes less important at a certain point with changes in management, changes in theory of change, in planning and everything. And also, as also Viviana was mentioning, uh, third, plat third party platforms, you find Google may be better at certain things, one of our efforts was a knowledge sharing platform uh, of uh, profiles of people, people and institutions. And that was a big platform where we were aggregating profiles of people and organizations working in agricultural research and development. What happened was that in the end, maybe we felt LinkedIn was better, you know what? I mean, in the end, why, why would you, why, what was the added value of a platform like that? So in general, we felt that the, the, the lessons learned were mainly about, uh, yeah, of course, sustainability, but in, in, in particular, being able to position the platforms, to clearly position the platforms uh, demonstrating their added value compared to what was already there. So we learned that the first thing that you have to do is actually having a clear idea of the landscape of what is already existing, where you position yourself, if you have added value, and then work in partnerships because normally, I mean, who, has, who is the best position to do something? It's normally something that you have to do with more actors. Also to make sure that you are not overlapping, overstepping with what they're doing. Uh, so yes, in a way I'm linking to what has already been said regarding sustainability and regarding commitment of partners. And I think positioning is a real big challenge. Good positioning of what you're doing. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Valeria, for your uh, um, ve very valuable experiences. And I um, heard uh, both you and uh, Viviana talking a lot about partnerships and collaboration. And indeed, we heard that, uh, and we know very well, there are plenty of platforms on knowledge sharing um, that also um, deal in uh, one way or another with innovations in agriculture sector. We heard here about at least um, five platforms uh, just from our panelists. And there are a lot of people already in the chat that are sharing um, their experiences as well. We had such question in the question and answer how the Wikipedia, for instance, is different from Research uh, for Life platform, which is, however, more academic, uh, designed for researchers, um, not uh, so much about practitioners and not for capacity development uh, in agriculture innovations. However, uh, they all work in a similar environment and for similar users, user groups. Is collaboration a way that we avoid duplications and explore synergies? And if so, if you would, would agree with that statement, um, is a collaboration easy? Uh, do you have a, a magic uh, silver bullet for strengthening collaboration? And I would like to hear from Peter because they have to deal in European Union with uh, 27 member states currently. Uh, and then maybe from Andre on that very quickly. If you, you have a magic formula, please let us know. Okay, so um, thank you for this question, Evina. Um, the, maybe there's one point I want to put on the table. So what is the difference between Google and between a platform? Because in fact, in both uh, websites, you can fill in uh, keywords to find up information. The major difference to my point of view is that a platform should provide you with trustful information and not with fake news. That's something that as a visitor, you cannot make a distinction if you look for information in Google. And this is, should be the added value of platforms. So that's one thing, eh? because it's also a point, okay, why should we still build up a platform? And why can we not simply use Google? All information is also over there. That's one point. Then, okay, you have uh, partnerships and so on. I also noticed one of the question, why should you not connect to uh, Farmbook, to uh, Tapipedia? So indeed, that is, uh, you have two options for that. Or you say, like uh, one of our IT collaborators who is now already for, I think, more than three months copying the whole internet into his service in his home. So that is just you copy the information that is in another platform and you insert it in your system and then you are pretty sure that you can look fast for information and that you can provide the same information as, as, as what was in the other one. So in, in, in one or another way, you, you, you consume the information that is in the other platform. The other option is that you make connection to the other, so that it means that or you make a, a pipeline to that other platform and that you go and you look with your uh, computer in, uh, or with your system in, in that system if that uh, specific request is available over there and then you also present it on your platform. Because I don't believe that you should uh, aim for one universal platform, you will never be successful, but I think you should aim for connection between platforms. So there are two options, or you take over all the information that is in the other platform, or you make just a, a certain uh, relationship between one platform and the other platform. Um, we, we are not decided yet how to do that, but um, one, one major issue that we are faced to, and that is also, uh, what you you briefly mentioned there, eh? it's to talk with the same language and the computer language is now as different compared to uh, the, the, the human language. So it means that we need to make this data 
what they call in Europe fair data, findable, accessible, interoperable data. So it means that uh, Agrofoc is, uh, is one of these, these common languages so that you use the same, uh, uh, what we also call metadata. It's the meta, uh, how to describe data. So it means that at least you should know who created that information, what was the date of creation, so that if somebody looks at it, that they can filter it if it's old or if it's new data. And this seems really difficult and really complex. If we look around in Europe, you can believe, oh, they are most advanced in that. So in fact, it's not. So it means that at a certain moment, the IT people who advised me said, okay, maybe we have to throw away all the old information and we just start with the new project starting up from zero because then we can uh, instruct them well how these data have to look and how these data have to be classified and which information that we need from this data. So which metadata that we need, if we can include it in the system. And if these data are not dead, and in fact, it's made very difficult to, to look them up and to, to see if this uh, is, is, is really relevant and if this is the information that, uh, that we want to put on the screen. Um, another point that is now very popular is that we want to make use of artificial intelligence. So it means also that uh, we will look at the profile of the people looking for information and therefore, okay, people hate to register themselves in the system. But indeed, if you want to have more uh, personal information, then we believe that, okay, please provide us with some information that we can indeed present you what you are looking for and that we can select it out of the database because I also completely agree with Andre who said, uh, yes, uh, you may have people and they lose their way and the, the, the whole amount of information. So it means that, uh, I believe in the future, we should also help people finding that information. And then you can say, maybe you will filter information away from the search. Yes, maybe that will be the case. But on the other hand, uh, we try to find something that is also very helpful for them. Thank you, Andre. Do you have... Uh, yes, me. Thank you very much, Nivena. Maybe I'll just pick up on uh, the last point uh, raised by Peter. Um, you know, uh, we we say data is knowledge, but it's not quite correct. Knowledge is uh, can be extracted from data, provided it is pre-digested or digested through some tools that will make available to the end user. That's why there are different levels, of course, of uh, in this process where you can just uh, make the data available. Let's say for research, typically that's what happens. Or you you can uh, already have um, within the platform some uh, regroupings of the data, which is already helpful to the researcher to find what he or she is looking for. But then you can have another level where you have some applications, some tools that have been developed. And I'm thinking of geodata in particular. There are so many tools available for this now. So incorporating these tools so that the information, the data is pre-digested, makes the emergence of knowledge uh, easier. And, and, and so I think that's the key in the configuration of the, of the platform or platforms. Now back to the partnership, I'll just quote an example. Uh, and it's not to criticize the country I like very much, and I have much respect for what the, the progress they're making in uh, handling data. It's Kenya. So we're working in Kenya with on the World Bank project, which in fact would be of interest to tap uh, as well, because the this project is called the Global Food Observatory, which uh, purpose is to basically have a clearer picture of all the initiatives that are taking place in relation to food and make aware each player in this of what other players are doing. And of course, from, from the government policy point of view to have a clearer idea of what is happening there. Kenya had already done a lot of work in that field uh, for a number of years, in fact. So what they've done is already quite impressive. So they told us initially or when we came there, we said the first step is to do the landscaping as to which data is available here. Oh, we have the list, so it's, it's all here, we've done that. Well, we took at their list, but then we looked also at the other organizations that operate in the country and see which data they have. And we found 60 others 
that were not in the compilation from the government. 60 different entities that do generate data and therefore knowledge. A number of them, by the way, were generating things that were awfully similar one to the other. So um, partnership is, is, is that really. It has to do with um, sharing the resources we have, see how we can combine ideas and, and resources uh, to generate more innovation or to generate an environment that is even more conducive to, to that. And as, as far as TAP is concerned, with we have hundreds and hundreds of partners in Africa, which I'd be uh, happy, we would be happy to facilitate linking with uh, TAP and, and of course our EU colleagues. Yeah. Thank you so much. Then I would like to ask you um, our third and last question. How do you envisage the future of the knowledge sharing platforms that are centered on innovation? Would knowledge sharing platforms cease to exist because they will be replaced with uh, fast developing technology, mobile apps, for instance? Um, or uh, they have a bright future? Um, I would ask Viviana maybe to, to share her thoughts with us. Thank you, Nevena. Um, I think I said a little bit when I answered my first question that I think that if we're really uh, talking about uh, platforms that enhance innovation in agriculture, uh, we can't just be repositories. Uh, the platforms have to move on from that for the knowledge to be able to be used or put in practice or adapted to the different conditions. And uh, you, you can't just have a library of everything that everybody has done. You have to go much further than that and uh, provide maybe tools for, be, <clears throat> for people to be able to co-design solutions or at least to, to share their ideas about how you could deal with whatever problem is is the most important in each particular locality or territory i think um, it it's not enough it's it's necessary of course you have to have the information available for everybody and the scientific information but if you're really trying to do something to promote the scaling uh, of solutions that are proven, I don't know, good or uh, with positive impact in certain places, but have not even been tried in other places, um, you have to go further. You have to, it's not just about sharing, here it is, take it. It, it, it has to be built into the local systems. And in the case of the TAP that uh, deals with tropical environments, that is even more so. When you have very specific socioeconomic and uh, environmental conditions that uh, need for innovation to be a little, or any process of innovation to be very locally adapted, very uh, with a great knowledge and the great capacity to understand the context, the environment, and what is needed to take uh, advantage of an opportunity or to deal with a terrible problem. Um, so I think if we can't just be talking about, I mean, for online tools, because of course there's all the face-to-face -face that's very important and the learning by doing in, in the field. But if, if we're trying to uh, deal with platforms that can provide a wider audience uh, in different countries, uh, with greater scope, et cetera, you, you can't just share the, I still call it information when it's a book and it's closed and you can't, uh, it can, if I learn it, it can be knowledge, but in the meantime, it's just information. It's just sharing that information is not enough. You have to really empower the, the possibility of people to plan their solutions and test them and, and move forward. Thank you Thank very you. much, uh, Viviana. So what I take from you, you are not too optimistic, but not too pessimistic. Uh, you said, yes, platforms may have a future, 
if we bring the people in, if we make the people part of the platform and make them interact. Uh, we had um, uh, a person from the chat, uh, uh, Harry Henderson, who said that we should bring the platform down to the local environment as well and demonstrate how the practices we promote, for instance, approaches we promote through a platform can work in practice, which is also a very valuable uh, point. Um, and I have Andre. Are you on the pessimistic or optimistic side? I'm on the very optimistic side. I, and there are many reasons for that. Um, of course, the evolution of technology has brought down costs for handling data and generating all kinds of analysis. Uh, the, so the costs are in all times low at this time for processing data as well as storage. But uh, to me, the, the two most significant uh, technological advances that took place in the very recent past that will change uh, things are one, uh, blockchain. Blockchain is very important for many things, but among other things now, it, it is used more and more to ensure traceability of agricultural products, which is very important in many ways in, in terms of food security and food safety also. Uh, and second, so that so that's one blockchain, and the second one is artificial intelligence, because through the emergence of this uh, technology, we are now in a position to evaluate, correlate, combine uh, incredible volumes of data which were unthinkable just uh, five years ago. So I, I think thanks to these uh, these innovations, and thanks also to uh, the work that uh, you guys are doing, that we're all doing actually, in increasing the awareness as to the knowledge that resides in this gold mine that data can be, if we only acknowledge it's there and insist that it be made available in, in a way that we can use it. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Valeria, Peter, do you have one key message very strong mm -hmm. on the future of the platforms? Yeah, I will be very quick because I have a much longer answer to your question about the future and whether they will disappear. My answer would be definitely no. Not that I'm more optimistic that we will have beautiful and efficient platforms because there is a lot of risk of duplication, we know, and also overlapping uh, information here and there. But the reason why I say that they will not disappear compared to services like I, I imagine you were referring to things like Google or other services that may compete is that actually these this services serve general needs. While in innovation, and the good thing about innovation is that you always have new ways of doing things and you have new needs and new ways of combining things. And that every we are always thinking that we need a new thing. We need a we have new needs that nobody is really um, satisfying. And so I think for that reason, there will be always new platforms. And it's not that, uh, in that case, it's not duplication, in my opinion. It's that really there are different needs that have to be fulfilled. So for that reason, I think it, also in the, in the view of innovation, I think they will not disappear, no. And they will be needed. Thank you so much. Peter, please. Uh, um... You know, I'm working at Ghent University and uh, the farm book is a European project for the next seven years. And there was a call text where we had to apply and we had to submit a proposal. But there was some part missing in that proposal. And this was something that I fully um, yeah, said we need to do that. And that is my full belief that sustainability is education of the next generation. So therefore, we have a very specific work package just addressing um, how to, to use the farm book or how you use a platform and on, on different levels. And so for students, for farmers and for advisors and so on. So it means that we fully aim that this, this, this tool is used by, by, by everyone and is uh, by training and, and, and whatever. And also we, we, we have invented the idea, okay, instead of talking how oh, we have a webinar, uh, we can talk about farminars. And then uh, instead of having a master class, we will have a, a farmer class. So one farmer is showing another farmer 
who used uh, the platform and, 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 and what was the benefit for him and so on. So these are some ideas that we are still working on. And I believe, yes, indeed, if you want to have a future for, for this kind of platforms, then you also have to explain how these platforms can be used in, in practice and, and on different levels and so on and by different uh, type of people. So that is uh, indeed something that... Uh, I, I want to say about what our, our aims are for the next seven years. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, there were very valuable points uh, that um, all the speakers mentioned in this uh, wonderful discussion, which I personally enjoyed very much and I learned a lot. I would like to thank uh, um, the panelists, including um, uh, our distinguished colleagues who opened the meeting uh, in the representation of the FAO and the uh, European Union. Um, our is a very fruitful partnership that uh, has lasted many years and allowed to support knowledge-based initiatives, including Tapipedia. Um, we have heard today about the importance to share knowledge and reach out uh, in agriculture in innovation, and especially on how to enhance the impact of the knowledge. And this is especially needed in the top tropics where most of the developing countries are located and the capacity gap is especially wide. So FAO does play a key role in this regard, in particularly through the tropical agriculture platform, and its projects and products aimed at strengthening the capacities of agriculture innovation and agriculture innovation systems in different countries. Um, and uh, the Pipedia that is developed within the context of the TAP is a knowledge sharing hub that strongly focused on capacity development for agriculture innovation systems. Uh, it's a multi-language repository and the verification and the quality check of the resources and advanced searching and browsing features make it as a reference gateway in relation to agriculture innovation. Also, the network is a, a great space for share knowledge on innovation and to link with other stakeholders in this field. And this very rich panel discussion shed light on knowledge sharing platforms from different angles. So we learned about uh, a long lasting experience in Latin America from Viviana Palmieri with success factors and also challenges, including in collaboration among different organizations that very much relates to the situation we have in Wikipedia, in which we have uh, many partners. Uh, we work together with them and um, we need to define even better the value of this partnership, this strategic and transformative partnerships as uh, we uh, now say in, um, in FAO, in our um, science and innovation strategy in order to uh, build sustainability and add a value to the end users as well. We also link this uh, with practice as we learned um, from uh, your lessons, uh, dear panelists. And indeed, uh, with the help of um, our uh, resource partner, European Union, we work uh, now in this project in nine countries, uh, and we try to um, uh, pilot experiences, including through, through the Wikipedia. It was very um, a relevant experience that we learned from uh, Peter Spanioche on the EU farm book um, with um, a, a lot of richness of experiences, challenges that you face and um, much modern and advanced approach uh, to go one step further and not so only to uh, provide knowledge or resources, that are good for academics, but that they should serve practitioners and especially farmers. Um, the quality of the knowledge is uh, of utmost uh, importance and um, we have to collaborate with, uh, um, uh, to avoid competi competition, duplication of efforts, 
although it is uh, interoperability now nowadays is still very challenging uh, also technically valeria peche presented uh, her experience in um, global forum for agriculture research with other partners uh, with the premise that the, the data sharing platforms are conducive to innovations. Challenges occurred, but uh, positioning was a key success factor. And again, the capacity to collaborate, exchange, uh, and also the com management was uh, very much highlighted. André Lapierre from uh, Godan um, elaborated on uh, the Godan experiences in uh, more than uh, 120 countries, uh, side by side with policymakers, farmers associations, uh, including resource partners, with a clear vision on the purpose driven data for the end users. In terms of future, we are seeing many innovations coming out every day. We are called to adopt new and innovative approaches for technologies like blockchain and artificial intelligence. We have a firm consensus to collaborate, join forces for co-managed platforms based on quality, verified knowledge and on participation allowing, uh, that allows a real um, interaction and sharing among the actors of the agriculture innovation systems. We have to embrace the variety of knowledge and not only formal documents. The strategies of Clearinghouse and uh, Niches platforms are uh, an optimal combination of the management and sharing of knowledge, especially in relation to agriculture innovation. However, we should be mindful about the sustainability and the cost of uh, some of those approaches. All of us here today have remarkable experience and are best positioned to lead cooperation efforts in knowledge for agriculture innovation. We have to strategize to ensure coherence and full exchange in this regard. So thank you very much indeed uh, for these valuable um, experiences. And I um, believe that you have enjoyed our discussions and you have learned something new in this webinar. Thank you.